two different types of RVs. You either have the towable kind where you have to have another car to actually tow you and take you somewhere, or you have a motorized RV. You might hear those are called motorhomes. It's like an all-in-one capsule. I've had both. Motor home. You have a motor and you have a home. Up front we have the cabin and then here in the back we have the house. There's three sizes to motor homes. The first one is the class A and these are those large buses that you see. There's tons of manufacturers and you can get a bus maybe for 50,000 used. They can get really pricey. These things can go up to over a million dollars. If you're gonna buy one, I suggest buying used. 20 up to 45 feet, sometimes more. And then I see people tow with them, depending on whether you're doing gas or diesel and which one of these classes that you're gonna choose is because of which one tows better and gets better gas mileage or diesel mileage while you're towing. Buses are on a Freightliner chassis. If you think of an 18 wheeler, the buses are actually on that kind of chassis. They've got them big tires, huge, huge. Inside there, you really can't see, but it's the chassis to a Freightliner truck and when you have to get these things serviced, you go to an RV dealership that can service them or a class A have to take it somewhere to get the tires serviced because of the size of this unit. It still brings complications. Class B is gonna have way better operating costs than any of the other class motorized RVs for sure because it's on a van chassis. It's not lightweight, but it's lighter weight. And it normally has the smaller tires on it. It's not got those big Freightliner tires. It's just more efficient overall. Now I have a diesel van. You can also get a gas powered van. My van is really good on diesel mileage and this fits in most parking spots. It will not fit in parking decks. It may fit in garages, but you'd have to check your garage and you got to remember that I have things like an air conditioning unit, an awning, antenna all up top. You can't just drive up under stuff. It will take them clear off. Oh, Lord, don't do that. This one is about 25 feet. You can get them smaller. It really just depends. And mine has a tire on the back, so it extends further. And then you can also use these to tow, I want to say 5,000 pounds, but it depends on what you get. They have four by fours. The class C's are your typical RV. It's where you're looking and you're like, oh, that's an RV over there. They have that big overhang over the top and that's normally for storage or some type of sleeping area. Those just look really RV to me. More cost efficient than one of the big buses, the class A's. Somewhere between 20 to 30 feet, they may have a little bit more or less. The manufacturers are getting really crafty. The class C, it's more of a truck chassis. It's a truck. Kind of think of like a U-Haul moving truck. This could be completely over your head. I don't know. If it is, please put your comments down below. Let's talk about towables and what are towables. Essentially, you have to have a tow car to tow them with you. So they're a trailer that you pull behind your car. There's different kinds. A travel trailer, fifth wheels, pop-up campers, toy haulers. Those are the basic kind. The travel trailer. You'd probably use something like this for camping more so. It can go anywhere from 15 feet to 40 feet. Tons of floor plans. So they do have tons of floor plans and they have really small ones. So you might find one that fits like two people or they might have 10 people in it. It depends on what you're looking for. Some have bunk beds. Some have convertible options like the tables convert to beds. The couches will be a pullout couch that makes into a bed. And then a lot of times they also have a bedroom. Some do, some don't. And also you want to look at the way that the showers are designed. Sometimes they have a shower that's separate from the toilet area and sometimes it's all in one and I'll explain more of that later. You can probably find one of these for about 8000 and they're gonna go all the way up to about $60,000. They can get pricey but you can find really nice ones and I would never buy one new. Please don't buy one new. Buy them a couple years used so that's kind of like my little sneaky bit of advice there. The new ones do have more features. A little year or two older, I'd say even within three years, they are going to still have some features. And plus, you're gonna wanna customize this. This is your house. There's some things you can't, but for the most part, a trailer's pretty basic and you have to bring 
everything you want to put in it anyway. Fifth wheels, really nice. They're very big. They have really tall ceilings. Considered a fifth wheel means that it has this hook that's embedded into the back of the truck. So the trailer like hooks into it in the back of the truck bed. The truck bed itself is altered and you have to have a, I think like a half ton truck or larger that can pull. It's going to be really heavy. It is nicer and bigger, but nicer and bigger also means more expensive. You can fit about four to 10 people in those and they, you might be able to have more. Who knows? There's tons of manufacturers. You might spend anywhere from about 20,000 to a hundred thousand on a fifth wheel. It could be over a hundred thousand if you get real spiffy. If you start adding all kinds of weird stuff to it, it can get pricey. A toy hauler, either a fifth wheeler or a travel trailer. They're kind of a mix. Kind of have a garage, essentially. I would call these like party trailers. If you go to the races or you have four wheelers, motorcycles, things like that, that you are going to take with you, these are really awesome options. Now, the garage is not big. Some people just use it as a garage, I guess, or a hangout spot. Most of them have high ceilings. You can get these for about 10000 all the way up to over a hundred thousand dollars again depending on what you add to these last but not least top up camper really lightweight less expensive less to operate the less expensive you go with your trailer means the more work that's involved to use it and by that i mean you're gonna have to level it when you get parked to get a generator to give you power because it doesn't come with power it does have a battery usually with it and they'll give you propane tanks i think but it really depends on the dealership and who you buy it from four to six people and they're really good for people that want something that's easy to store and easy to travel with as far as towing because you're gonna have to tow it but it pops up and turns into a camper and really the only place you're gonna be using this is probably an rv park or somebody's property that you might be staying on this would be kind of weird to use something like this i think in a parking lot unless they're saying like oh we're rv friendly i had a pop-up when i was younger i mean i can't say it's that weird we did have a pop-up we kept it in the yard though i don't think we ever took it anywhere when you're thinking about an rv you have to think about what your needs are motorized slash drivable RV. You might hear that term or you might hear the term motor home. Now I actually have a car so if I really wanted to take a car with me to be able to get around say I wanted to park this I could tow my car with me. If I had a towable option I would tow with my tow car, park my trailer, then I would go do whatever I want to go do. I'd un unhook it and level it and all kinds of other stuff. Towables to me are if you're more of a camp I think I got that right. You don't want to make the same mistakes that I did when I started this whole RVing process. And I've had a ton of RVs from travel trailers to motorized units. Hit up the description below this video and download my top 10 mistakes that most RVers make because they can be costly and time consuming and we don't have time for that. We want to have fun when we're RVing. Learn from me. Just learn from me and we're gonna do this thing together. Make sure to comment below this video so I know what questions you have and who knows, you might be featured in my next video. Until the next time, I'm Brandy of bloggingbrandy.com and this is my RV channel, Rversity, where I share all of my tips, tricks, and tutorials about RVing. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.